All right, Eric Holder targets Texas for voter ID laws and some others, but is this about civil rights or is it a political ploy, a fair and balanced debate? It's a feisty one. You will not want to miss it. And plus, Governor Rick Perry says Attorney General Eric Holder is doing an end run around the Supreme Court with his latest move targeting Texas over its redistricting plans. A fair and balanced debate coming up. Attorney General Eric Holder has set his sights on Texas. He's downplaying a recent Supreme Court ruling regarding the Voting Rights Act and stirring up a lot of controversy in the process. Senior correspondent Eric Sean has the story of the newest legal battle the Justice Department is launching. One month after the Supreme Court rejected a part of the historic 1965 Voting Rights Act that monitored elections in mostly southern states, U.S. Attorney General Eric Holder did the opposite. He announced the Justice Department is targeting Texas, trying to force the state to get federal approval for any changes in its voting laws over the next decade. Holder spoke at the annual National Urban League Convention in Philadelphia. It is the duty of today's Justice Department to continue monitoring jurisdictions around the country for changes that may hamper these voting rights. Last month, just hours after the Supreme Court ruling, Texas became the first state to react by immediately implementing its new voter ID law. But Holder cited another court decision that found the Texas legislature's congressional redistricting plan discriminated against Latino voters. In that ruling, the court noted that the parties, and I quote, this is what the court said, the parties provided more evidence of discriminatory intent than we have space or need to address here. This is a federal court that said that. In Texas, reaction was sharp. Republican Governor Rick Perry branded Holder's move as an end run around the Supreme Court. He said, quote, once again, the Obama administration is demonstrating utter contempt for our country's system of checks and balances, not to mention the U.S. Constitution. And Republican Senator John Cornyn accused the White House of bullying his state, not to protect voters, but for partisan political purposes. Part of the long-term strategy of this administration is to try to turn Texas blue. And so they're engaging in this kind of bogus political activity to try to raise concerns with regard to things like uh, minority voting that simply aren't supported by the evidence. And uh, I think this is uh, to create a false impression that somehow minority rights are not being protected, which they are. Texas Republican Senator Ted Cruz was also critical, accusing the attorney general of politicizing the Justice Department. Cruz said, quote, Holder's refusal to accept the judgment of the U.S. Supreme Court regarding preclearance continues the department's longstanding pattern of refusing to follow the law. The controversial Houston-based voter fraud group True the Vote went even further. It promises legal action, saying this is the same Justice Department that, quote, criminalizes journalism and fails to prosecute IRS agents. For his part, Mr. Holder promises even more actions on voter issues in other states. In Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, I'm Eric Sean, Fox News. As you saw in Eric's report, there's plenty of backlash to the Justice Department's decision to go after Texas and what the governor there is calling an end run around the Supreme Court. So is the move about protecting civil rights? Is it politics or is it in some way both? Radio show hosts Mark Levine and Chris Plant here for a fair and balanced debate. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, Mark, the Supreme Court just a few weeks ago, a few blocks from here, ruled on this and said, you know, they're not getting rid of the Voting Rights Act, but they're taking away this formulation that says all of the states and municipalities that are in trouble uh, under the Voting Rights Act. It's a formula that's four decades old and said to Congress, rewrite the formula. Eric Holder's not waiting for that. This isn't about the formula. See, the formula is decades old. That's what the Supreme Court got rid of. And that's under Section 4 and Section mm -hmm. 5. Eric Holder's going under Section 3. In other words, if you're deliberately racist, if you're deliberately using race-conscious elements to restrict people from voting, and Texas has admitted they're throwing 600,000 to 800,000 people off the voting rolls, according to the Houston Chronicle and the Texas Secretary of State, it's 2.3 million people they're throwing off the voter I'm rolls. I'm guessing some of those, and 18%. The, the state would say, don't belong there. I mean, there's a reason. They're not just, you know, willy-nilly throwing These people are off people the rolls. Like uh, people born by midwives that don't have birth certificates. These are students that have student IDs. These are people, poor people who can't afford to travel the 250 miles that they have to drive in order to get an ID. These are people that can't afford to pay the poll tax that Texas has. It's a $22 poll tax. You have to have a birth certificate, $22. Even though the Constitution of the United States, the 24th Amendment, says very clearly you can't have a poll tax. Look, Texas is trying to bring tax. back Jim Crow. Oh, and the oh, answer is the 1960s are over, and Texas needs to understand that. 
that even though the state is majority non-white, they have to let them vote too. All right, too. You, you've thrown a lot of red meat to Chris, so I'll, I'll let him... It'll take about an uh, hour to untangle the train wreck of absurdities contained in that opening statement. The Supreme Court has thrown it to Congress to redraw the map. They haven't thrown out the formula. They've said Congress needs to address it because it was nearly a half a century ago. It was 48 years ago. Section join us, says Attorney General. Join us, join us here in the uh, 21st century where it's not 1965 anymore, first of all. Secondly, this whole driver's license thing is ridiculous. I had to show a driver's license to pick up my dry cleaning yesterday. I had to show a driver's license to get into this building today. Homeless people have driver's licenses. No, to say don't. that that's outright racism is the most ridiculous. Five percent of Texas and this don't is, have a driver's license. Here's, can we agree 5%, on this? Five percent. Well, are this? they under sixteen? If you really want to you know, listen, let people it, it, vote, listen. Why it, not give everyone a voter ID? How about that? Every state well, that requires just, it has just, done that, as a matter of fact. Not just a and secondly, license. Jim Crow is a, a Democrat project, thank you very much. Everybody standing in the schoolhouse doors, all Democrats, the party of slavery and, and the Klan. And Republicans the, because yeah, of the Southern Yeah, strategy. right, because that's a, like another Trump phony... Thurman became a Republican. Another phony, uh, yeah, when he gave up racism, moved forward. Uh, Robert Trump Byrd Thurman, didn't. I don't think he Robert gave up Robert Byrd racism. didn't. Uh, on the no, other hand, and, and there's 250 miles. Why not miles? let people of vote? Of course we let people vote. Listen, okay. I grew up in yeah. Chicago, where Democrats have been stealing elections quite proudly and bragging about it for Chris. generations. Joe Kennedy, father of the Kennedy clan, famously said of West Virginia on election night 1960, look, I'm not paying for a landslide here. People steal elections. There's election fraud in the over 1960s, place. In Obama, the 1960s and the 1920s? An Perhaps. Obama voter you know and, and an active Democrat was just thrown in jail in Ohio for voting repeatedly repeatedly in multiple elections. Voter fraud is very real. The only people that want to preserve the, the laws as they are are people who want you'll, to steal you'll have votes to show and me steal this case. elections. Do you know how many cases in Texas since 2000 involved voter impersonation fraud? Now, you're more likely to be struck by a meteorite. That's you know, right. You know, because you know, the federal well, courts have found zero, zero even the attorney general. Gen true. Gen gentlemen. Simply okay, not having true. talked with the Texas Attorney General there, Greg Abbott, who's now running for governor there, mm -hmm. I mean, he said that they've handled right. hundreds of cases. Yeah, that's, that's no, no, why, but, but that's Shannon, why is, Shannon, they unless you're calling him a liar, that's what he's no, told no, us. No, no, here's what he said. He this said there were there were 57 funny. cases. I've read that report. There are 57 cases of voter fraud throughout the state. That includes absentee voting fraud. That includes registration fraud. There were two cases, according to Greg Abbott, of in-person voting fraud. Remember, the voter ID doesn't prevent someone from falsely voting, voting right. let me, let me by, you, by absentee ballot. Let me ballot. ask you about a couple things. First yeah. of all, in most states, if you show up without an ID and, and you want to contest it, you can vote with a provisional ballot. Not in it's Texas. Held. Not in, in Texas. Secondly, the Supreme Court, under the uh, opinion written by Justice uh, John Paul Stevens, not a right-wing nut job by any stretch of the imagination, said it's okay to have voter ID. It's okay to have voter ID. You know, what you can't do, though, is prevent people from getting voter no, ID. No, and in Texas, Here's what they're doing in Texas. Driver's license. Okay. You can use you know, military ID. You can these, use all kinds of things. You know, you can't use, no, no, you can't are, use a student absurd. ID. You can't use a government-issued ID. If you work you for the state capital and absurd. you have a government-issued ID, you, you don't have to be a citizen to have a student ID. You don't have to be a citizen to have a state ID to work in the capital. You have to be a citizen to vote. Would you have supported? There were a number of Democratic amendments to this bill, and they said if you have to drive 200 miles. To get the right to vote, mm -hmm. you should get travel reimbursement. Republicans said no. To waive the $20 fee. Travel reimbursement. You, where, does that, no. where does that bureaucracy come from? The to right to vote travel? is right here in the Constitution. Yeah, I, I'm right? understand you that. shouldn't you be know charging what? people to vote. You're, you're in getting America. very emotional. Listen, I am because you're the right charging. to vote let, let me, is, let is let me, an let, American. How about the Second Amendment? Uh, let, let's get to the that's Second right. Amendment. That's concealed gun license. That's not let you vote in Not concealed gun license. It's right here in the Second Amendment. The right to vote. But not a student ID and not a government ID. You've got to show an ID to buy a gun, don't you? You wouldn't, you wouldn't be in favor of people buying guns without IDs, <laughs> would you? We're going to leave it there. That's a constitutional right, and it having requires found, ID. Having found zero resolution, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to leave it right there. We thank you both. We're He's glad wrong. the Constitution is making an appearance Absolutely. here. It's always the hallmark of anything that we debate. Thank you both. Thank you, Shannon. All right, thank you, some say it is a war on...